Joining us now, Superintendent of Miami-Dade County Public Schools, Dr. Albert Carvalho, and the Superintendent of Schools in Los Angeles County, Deborah, Deborah Eduardo. Uh, thanks to both of you. We know you got a lot on your plate. Mm -hmm. uh, Deborah, perhaps I could begin with you. So the CDC initially had guidelines. Uh, they were shelved. Now you have decision trees uh, sent out to folks like you, superintendents like yourself, to, to, to in effect, make the decision yourself. Is, is that what you need? Well, we're really looking for clear guidance from the Department of Public Health. Our number one priority is making sure that our students and our employees are safe. So we're looking for direct guidance to help us to ensure that as we look at reopening schools, our children and our employees are going to be safe. Um, let me read to you, Alberto, from this the decision tree that the CDC put out for schools, okay? Here's what they're saying. Uh, schools, will reopening be consistent with applicable state and local orders? Is the school ready to protect children and employees at higher risk for severe illness? Are you able to screen students and employees upon arrival for symptoms? If the answer to any of those questions is no, the CDC advises don't open. D can you guys meet all of that, do you think, by September? Well, number one, uh, thank you for the opportunity to have this important conversation with CNN. Uh, sure. We will be able to implement uh, the vast majority of those protocols if we receive the appropriate support, particularly from the federal government. Uh, we had already implemented, declared uh, across our community, a reopening of schooling plan. That does not necessarily mean a reopening of schools. That is a resumption of education that takes into mm -hmm. account temperature measurements uh, at the uh, at buses, entering schools, unidirectional hallways to reduce points of contact, and obviously increased social spacing between students, the elimination of traditional uh, cafeteria uh, meal distribution, where meals would be distributed to the classrooms instead, in addition to the appointment of a chief health officer to liaison with a health department at the CDC. But we're a long ways away from that point. I mean, no one really knows what the evolution of COVID-19 will be over the summer. So the best course of action, which is what we're doing right now, we are surveying our parents. We are preparing for blended and hybrid learning models, which would allow parents actually to make the decision regarding how to educate their child. We are prepared to teach kids at home. We're prepared to teach kids half time in school, part of the time at home or 100% at school, as long as all of the safety precautions yeah. guided by science and medical officials are followed. Mm -hmm. uh, and you make an important distinction there, right? You know, the education may begin, but the schools may not open uh, to the same degree that, that we imagined. De Deborah, I have a question for you. This is the big one, and Poppy and I both have kids, and our schools are making decisions and thinking about the fall. You know, the big question here is, what is the risk to children? Right, and I'm curious what guidance you're getting on how at risk they are. And then, of course, you have the component question, which is, even if children are more protected, you got the teachers and the other staff to think about who are adults and who do have, you know, much greater risk from this. Right. So we're we're following the research that you know right now tells us that when students or children do uh, get COVID, they're more likely to have a lesser. Um, uh, negative response to it, although we know in some rare situations children can get a more severe reaction. Uh, what we're really doing is making sure that um, we ha are, are, are mitigating those risks to the extent possible. You know, some of the questions that you asked about when we're ready to open our doors, we need to make sure that we have the PPE equi equipment, that we have the disinfectants and the hand sanitizers. You know, a lot of those things right now are on back order and they're difficult to stock our schools currently mm -hmm. to make sure that our schools have all of the supplies that they need. So in the meantime, we are continuing with our distance learning, with our online instruction and making sure that we're planning for when we do return to school implementing all of the things that we can do to make sure that children are safe. Um, there are challenges, you know, with physical distancing and young children wearing masks. And so we're planning now. We have task force of superintendents that are coming together and really thinking about how do we implement the physical distancing and the safety precautions that the Department of Mental Health, the Department of Public Health um, is asking us to implement. But, you know, again, we need to make sure not only our children are safe, that our employees are safe, we have a lot of employees that fall into that high-risk category. 
Yeah. Um, Albert, Alberto, one, one question to you, because we're looking at Miami-Dade and Broward County starting to reopen under phase one. You said something interesting recently, which is that um, the 2021 school year, for some, may actually start earlier than September. Are you looking at a July or August start date for some? Yes, when I made that announcement, it's really out of concern for what I believe will be a historic, uh, precedent-setting academic regression. You know, we all know what the summer slide is, particularly fragile kids, poor kids, students with disabilities, and English language learners over the summer uh, lose part of the learning from the previous year. Look, we had a significantly disrupted fourth quarter, uh, and now we're going to enter the summer. We have to believe that these fragile children will lose a lot of academic ground. That is why we planned and are ready to implement two summer virtual sessions for those students. We're planning to bring 25% of our student population, the most at-risk students, back uh, to school uh, two weeks earlier. That's about 46,000 students. We will be adding an additional hour of instruction for those same students and assigning uh, yeah. virtual uh, tutors and mentors to all of them. Now, the geography of where and how education will take place is still up in the air. There's a lot of uncertainty. And I would not take a clear attitude, as Dr. Fauci said, when it comes to the health of children. There's a lot that we do not know. And the decision to bring students back into a physical environment shall be guided by science, medical opinion, and the best logistics on how to do it safely in Miami. Well, we wish you guys so, so much luck as you do that. And thank you both for looking out for those most at risk children, especially Deborah. Good luck, Alberto. We'll talk to you soon.